what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 wrestling moments that have aged horribly in wwe it should be very interesting to see what moments have uh aged poorly there's a lot of things that when you go back and look at old wwe footage you would be like ah that wouldn't work in today's time at all this age horribly actually <laughs> there's a lot of things if you want to be honest you go back and watch even in just the ruthless aggression era, they couldn't get said or shown on television now times have changed so we're gonna check this out should be a good one appreciate all love and support let's get right into this one man certain wwb moments have changed as the years have gone by while some segments seemed humorous two decades ago, in the modern day, they are seen as exploitative and offensive. Yeah. And there were also those segments which, which were controversial when they took place, but WWE were at a point with their creative output where they didn't seem to care about the negative reaction or no. causing any controversy. <laughs> Outside of offensive segments, WWE have notoriously made some creative decisions that have aged terribly. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE moments that have aged horribly. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive layers. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Jared the Subway Guy. The Subway Guy known as Jared Fogle had a number oh, of appearances on no. WWE television. Most oh. notably, he would guest star on an episode of Raw in 2012. Oh, and no. WWE believed this would lead to mainstream exposure. But over a decade after his guest star stint, it's likely that WWE will never mention Fogel's name ever again. Nor should they. In 2015, they. it was uncovered that Fogel had committed some heinous acts, and ultimately, he was sentenced to 15 years and 8 months in federal prison. If you don't know what they are, search the guy's name. Yeah, nah, you don't, you don't even, YouTube's, we don't, we don't even talk about it, YouTube, don't even want nobody to talk about it, yeah, just Google his name, it ain't gonna be about Subway sandwiches, I can tell you that, so of course, they should never, ever <laughs> bring up his name, Jesus. WWE has smartly distanced themselves from Fogel and on the WWE Network, if his name is typed into the search bar, no results come up. Good. Which seems fitting for a man as despicable as Fogel. Facts. Number 9, Vince McMahon's racist comment to Sabu. <sighs> WWE's relationship with Islamic-centered countries is well documented, yet if they saw one specific clip of Vince McMahon, they would have a ton of questions. During the revamped ECW in 2007, yep. McMahon had a notorious backstage interaction with ECW icon Sabu. Following the interaction, fans were left gobsmacked. McMahon would address Sabu by saying, Well, I'll be damned. I thought I was in Texas. Hell, I'm not in Texas. I'm in Afghanistan. Mm. Hey, boys, check it out. Here's a member of the Taliban. There are no words to accurately describe <sighs> what McMahon was thinking when he made these comments. He wasn't. Quite frankly, there was no excuse, even in 2007, for a segment of this nature to air on WWE television. Number eight, it's just Vince. racism. It's just, it's just Vince. His sick, perverted mind. That's, it's Vince. That's all I can say. There's really no explanation, no reason for it. It's just Vince. And not every WWE moment that has aged horribly occurred decades ago. Nope. One infamous moment took place in 2017 and it saw Jinder Mahal taking part in one of the most controversial and tested segments in the modern era. In a segment on SmackDown, Mahal would mock Shinsuke Nakamura's accent and he would even compare the decorated star to Mr. Miyagi. Fans were quite speechless that this was taking place in 2017. That's Vince for you. The was so severe that WWE were forced to release an official statement. Just like many other TV shows or movies, WWE creates programming with fictional personalities that cover real-world issues and sensitive subjects. As a producer of such TV shows, WWE Corporate is committed to embracing and celebrating individuals from all backgrounds as demonstrated by the diversity of our employees, performers, and fans worldwide. Yeah. AKA political jargon. Come up. Someone came up with it. Probably one of the, you know, lawyers, whoever to save face but at the end of the day it's vince <laughs> really wasn't a good look for wwe number seven the 1999 royal rumble 
But due to contemporary information about CTE, WWE have stopped chair shots to the head indefinitely. For sure. WWE are so strict on this policy that they're even reluctant to show archive footage featuring a spot, and this has created problems when highlighting one of their most infamous matches of the Attitude Era. The 1999 Royal Rumble featured The Rock and yep. Mankind colliding in an I Quit match. And the match featuring The oh Rock brutalizing gosh, Mankind with bro. sinister chair shots to the head Unprotected time and time again chair shots, unpleasant bro. viewing. Now, this type of physicality would never be allowed on no, WWE programming nor today, should it, bro. which is without a doubt the right policy. Oh Unfortunately my God. for WWE, the match itself was documented on the Beyond the Mat documentary, which means footage of the chair shots often pop up when new fans watch the documentary for the first time and it always leads to some criticism being directed towards WWE. Yeah, bro. Number six. Uh, <sighs> uh, and he was laying in them shots. Those weren't bullshit shots. He's laying in. And this nigga, he's handcuffed. Taking It's different when you're taking a protected chair, chair shot. Get your hands up. The hands take most of the blow. But when this unprotected, oh my gosh. Kerwin White. Now, there have been some characters and gimmicks in WWE yep. that have aged like milk. And one of these gimmicks is the gimmick of Kerwin White. In 2005, WWE would rebrand Chavo Guerrero as Kerwin White. This gimmick saw Guerrero dye his hair blonde and denounce his Hispanic heritage. <sighs> Most of the content of the character, particularly during the promos, crossed the line as Guerrero would often make questionable comments towards black members of the roster. The gimmick though was atrocious and it failed to get over as the fans had no interest in seeing the gimmick on TV. The gimmick almost went even further as Guerrero wore a white sheet to the ring and this was going to imply that Guerrero was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. But thankfully, this idea never materialized. Yeah, that's Vince. Number 5. The Racist Storyline Oh Don't boy. We couldn't just book a traditional good guy versus bad guy nope. match when booking Booker nope, T versus nope, Triple H nope, at nope, WrestleMania nope. 19. Instead of the traditional approach to the storytelling selling the world title matchup, they decided to create one of the most controversial storylines of all time. As the storyline had racial undertones throughout which offended the fan base and made them completely disconnected from the product. In one particular promo during the build, Triple H would declare, I think you're a little bit confused about your role in life here. Yep. You're going to get to WrestleMania, but the fact is, book up somebody, somebody like, like you, you doesn't get to be a world champion. People like you don't deserve it. That's reserved for people like me. That's where the confusion is. You're not here to be a competitor. You're here to be an entertainer. That's what you do. You entertain people. Hell, you entertain me all the time. Go ahead. Do a little dance for me. Go ahead. Go give me one of those spinneroonies. Entertain me. That's your job. Don't be embarrassed. You're here to make people like me laugh with your nappy hair and your suckers. The segments and promos during the build seemed to get worse and worse as Triple H would treat Booker in a despicable way, and they refused to change the direction of the storyline. The natural conclusion to the offensive storyline was Booker mm. overcoming the game and defeating him on the grandest stage of WrestleMania, but WWE made the questionable decision to have Triple H win the match. Despite the match taking place at WrestleMania and featuring two certified legends, the match is rarely mentioned by WWE. They clearly want to try and act like the storyline never happened, <laughs> as it's certainly a storyline that should have never ever been pitched, never mind been put on TV. Yep, I, I gotta give Triple H some 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 uh, backlash on that one too, because apparently he was the one that I think the day of he was the one decided that he should go over. That's the reports that he decided that he should go over the day of the show, because it was gonna be. Uh, it was in the plans for Booker T to win it, to overcome the odds. And no. And not only that, he hit the pedigree and then had a slow crawl as he hit the pedigree and then covered him. Didn't even kick out. Still one of the biggest egregious, like egregious moments in WrestleMania history. So Triple H played some parts in it. But at the end of the day, it's Vince for you. Number four, Vince McMahon uses the N-word. For what? some reason, during the 2005 Survivor <sighs> Series event, Vince McMahon decided to book himself in a segment where he proudly used the N-word. In a backstage segment, McMahon would take part in a promo with John Cena, and to close the promo, McMahon would refer to Cena as the N-word. McMahon would then walk past Booker T and Charmel in one of the most tasteless segments WWE have ever delivered. 
According to Bruce Pritchard on his podcast, the segment doesn't hold up, but in a bizarre fashion, he tries to justify the segment by saying it was a different time in a different place. Now come on, this is too- Of course he is. No, it doesn't fucking hold up. I remember when that shit happened, I was just like, what the fuck? No, it don't hold up. No. No. Just, just no. Just. No. 2005 really wasn't a different time and place. No. Pritchard said, I don't think it holds up well. Well, I think there were people whose opinions were asked, and again, it's just a different time and a different place where you did different things that were not things that hold up. When I go back and I'm into the Alfred Hitchcock hour now, taping it every single night. You sit there and you watch some of those things on television of men just basically slapping their ish out of women back and forth as if it was just another day at the office. And it's, and it's just time has a way of making things cringeworthy. Again, different time, different place, different mentality. No. Number three, the <laughs> use of blackface. At WWE is a documented history of allowing talent to use blackface. The first notable instance of this occurred when Roddy Piper, who wore half blackface for his feud with Bad News Brown. Fast forward to the Attitude Era, Blackface would be incorporated into a segment once again when X-Pac impersonated Mark Henry. Yeah. It's insane that WWE believed that this was a smart idea. Now it's worth noting that during an interview with Uprox, X-Pac did admit how much he regretted doing it for the segment, which was more of an apology than WWE as an organization have ever offered over the years. Oh, for sure. It would also be used for Goldust during a match with Flash Funk. Goldust was going through an identity crisis, so they made the decision to paint his face to supposedly represent the inner conflict. Number 2. The WrestleMania 20 Main Event Now, WrestleMania 20 was to be the biggest event ever. Yeah. However, due to Chris Benoit's actions in 2007, the show is rarely mentioned. Nope. The main event of the show featured Benoit winning the world title in a triple threat match, and then the show went off the air with Benoit celebrating with his family. Mm -hmm. The WWE have tried to revise history when it comes to WrestleMania 20, and when the show is discussed in documentaries or publications of any kind, the Kane vs. Taker and John Cena vs. Big Show matches are usually the only two matches that are ever mentioned. Yeah. On the network, the Benoit match is still featured, but his celebration with his family has been completely removed. And instead, the show simply ends with Benoit celebrating with Eddie Guerrero mm -hmm. before posing on the turnbuckle as the show fades out. And number one, yeah, the it, it, yeah, that's just all. That's a big touchy subject. It'll always be a touchy subject. It's, it's just tragic, bro. Chris Benoit tribute show. Yep. Speaking of Benoit, when WWE found out that Benoit and his family had passed, they dedicated an episode of Raw mm -hmm. to Benoit's memory. Raw was turned into a tribute show and it I featured remember watching as this. well as top WWE talent paying tribute to Chris Benoit. The truth though would soon surface in relation to what Benoit mm -hmm. had actually done and WWE were then forced to distance themselves completely. They just dedicated a tribute show to a man who committed the most unforgivable act yep. and they were quick to erase the show from the history books. In countries where Raw aired on delay, a new show was sent to them which featured WWE highlights from the past calendar year. In relation to the WWE Network, the show has been replaced by a best of WWE compilation. There's obviously no mention of Benoit on the nope. show in any capacity. So there you have it, folks. 10 I mean, yeah, it's once again, very, 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 very touchy subject. It's just, uh, you don't even want to mess with that. Anything that involves the Chris Benoit stuff, you just kind of put your hands up because it's just... It's a touchy subject. It's very tragic on all fronts. So comment down below. Let me know some other moments that when you watch back from like the attitude era or the ruthless aggression era, you're like, this is this is not this don't age well. If it wasn't on this video, there's a lot, y'all. There's a lot of clips that do not age well at all. Legitimately don't age well at all. So if they weren't listening in this video, let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. I'm still young. Speed the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.